between Carter Park, Rosemont, and Worth Heights streets improvements. Uh, my name is Christian Cardona. I am the project manager for this project specifically. I work for the city of uh, Fort Worth Transportation and Public Works Department. Um, is uh, Jeanette Martinez, Council District 11 here? If she is, does she have any comments before we start? Chris, I'm here. I'm Ray Chaudiano. I'm her district director. I am new with Councilwoman Martinez. I know she does plan to join. She had another meeting prior to this, okay. so she may be running behind. I don't have any comments to make at this time on her behalf, but um, she may have some comments to make when she's able to join. Okay, that sounds good. We could uh, go through this presentation, and if she has any comments towards the end, we'll, we'll go do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and get started then. So this presentation is meant to provide you with some information about the project scope improvements and to seek community input during the development of the project. So for those of you watching, um, here's the agenda of what I hope to cover in my brief presentation. I'll be talking about the project as a whole, uh, providing a summary of improvements on each street associated with this project and discussing the expected schedule moving forward, along with my contact information for questions or comments regarding the project towards the end. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about the overall scope of this project. As you can see, there are multiple streets in different locations for this project, which I'll, I'll quickly run through. Um, so we'll start with, with Number one, we got 5th Avenue from Flint Street to West Seminary Drive. Uh, number two is West Buick Street from Hemphill Street to May Street. Number three, we have West Buick Street from Henderson Street to 5th Avenue. Number four, we have McClure Street from Elva Warren Street to Debbie Drive. Uh, number five, we have 5th Avenue from West Sem Seminary Drive to Broadest Street. Number six, we have Blodgett Avenue, 90 feet east of McClure to 215 east. Um, number seven, we have Elva Warren Street from McClure Street to the east dead end. Uh, our number eight, we have McClure Street from Elva Warren Street to 285 feet north of Elva Warren. And number nine, we have Merriweather Avenue from the east dead end to Burke Road. As you can see here, there's number 10 and number 11. Those weren't stated here, but those are easement areas where they're gonna be doing new sanitary sewer line replacement. So we'll go ahead and move on. All right, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead, uh, this we'll go ahead and talk about the scope of improvements associated with this project. So on this next slide right here, you have McClure Street, West Buick, uh, and Fifth Avenue uh, with deteriorated asphalt pavement. Uh, in some areas, you can also see that there's some rain that's been ponding um, even after days of a rain event. So on the similar slide, um, you can see Elba Warren Street, Merriweather, and Blodgett also have deteriorated asphalt. So we'll go ahead and move on to the proposed improvements for each, each location. Uh, we'll start with Fifth Avenue from Flint to Seminary. Um, we'll be getting upgrading the existing six inch water to a new eight inch water line. For the pavement improvements, we'll have new pavement with concrete curbs, a new concrete driveways with 11 feet, uh, 11 foot width minimum or match existing, uh, new five foot sidewalks on both sides of the street. For West Buick Street from Hemphill to May, for water improvements, we'll be upgrading a six inch existing water line to a new eight inch water line, upgrading a six inch sanitary sewer line and up to an eight inch line in the alley areas within crossing uh, West Buick as well as within the West Buick Street. Uh, for paving improvements, we'll have new pavement with concrete curbs as well as new concrete driveway with 11 foot minimum width or matching existing width. New five foot sidewalk on both sides of the street.
for West Buick Street, the other portion from 5th to Henderson, uh, we'll be upgrading the existing 6 inch water line to a new 8 inch water line. The pavement improvements will have a new pavement with concrete curbs, new concrete driveway with 11 foot minimum widths, and new 5 foot sidewalks on both sides of the street. <clears throat> From McClure Street, we're going to be upgrading the existing six inch water line to a new eight inch water line, as well as upgrading the existing six inch sanitary sewer line to a new eight inch water, eight inch uh, sanitary sewer line. Excuse me. Uh, for the pavement improvements, we'll have pavement with concrete curbs, uh, new concrete driveways with 11 foot minimum widths or match existing width, uh, new five foot sidewalks, as well as new asphalt pavement on the north end of Eva Warren, which that portion is funded by the water department. Now we'll move on to the 5th Avenue from Seminary to Broadus. Uh, we'll be upgrading the existing 6 inch water to a new 8 inch water line. For the pavement improvements, uh, for this pavement improvements specifically, the water department will be funding and this will be, have a new asphalt pavement. For Blodgett Street, we'll be upgrading the existing six inch sanitary sewer to a new eight inch sanitary sewer. Uh, for the pavement improvements, as well as this one, will be funded by the water department, which will uh, pertain new asphalt pavement. Of Warren Street, uh, we'll be upgrading the existing six inch water to a new eight inch water line. Upgrading a six inch sanitary sewer line to a new eight inch sanitary sewer line. This will also be um, funded by the water department, which will be new asphalt pavement. Moving on to Meriwether Street, we'll be upgrading the existing six inch water line to a new eight inch water line. We'll be upgrading existing six inch sanitary sewer line to a new eight inch sanitary sewer line. And for this one as well, this will be funded by the water department, which will pertain new asphalt pavement. So we'll go ahead and get in, move on to the next slide. So to get an idea of what the street will look like after construction, we have a picture of a concrete street just completed. Uh, it's got new driveways, new sidewalks, and new curbs. As well, we have an asphalt street just completed pertaining to the same thing, new sidewalk, new driveways, and new concrete curbs. Additionally, we have pictures of a uh, new concrete sidewalk and new ADA ramps to get a better idea of what it'll look like in your area. So we're going to go ahead and move on to project schedule and milestones. So, as you can see here that we get the anticipated project schedule. Um, from 90% planned all the way to completion of construction. So, I want to emphasize uh, the complete the beginning of construction is anticipated to start October of 2024. And the anticipation of completion of construction is anticipated to end in January of 2026. I also want to mention that we will also be having a pre-construction public meeting. Um, so, similar to this meeting, you'll receive a mail card with the assigned date for the pre-construction meeting. So, be on the lookout for that. <clears throat> now, if you would like to stay updated on the project, uh, you can go to the link, the first link below. Um, it takes you straight to the web page and it gives you uh, updates about what's going on throughout the project. Or you can also go to www.fortworthtexas.gov and enter 104183 in the search bar. This will also take you to the project page, which allows you to stay updated uh, throughout the course of the project. And if you want to know any additional information about the 2022 bonds, you can go to this link down below. 
پای درخت فلوده Hey, Christian, this is Laura. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I am going to, for the folks who are on, um, put my contact info in the chat. If anyone okay. does not know how to access the chat, let me know. Um, I'll also put my phone number and email in there so you can reach out to me. I'll say it if somebody doesn't have the chat, but I will uh, let you know and I can email you how to find all these different things. Okay. There is a question. If you are ready for that, it looks like maybe your slide says you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're we're ending towards the uh, the presentation. So we'll open up to the floor. Any questions or comments? Um, I'm free to go back to any slides in particular. Okay. If thanks, this one is yes, that would probably be good because this person would like to know if you could mention what neighborhoods these are in. So I know you maybe have them by location. Um, so I think I'm asking this correctly. It says, can you mention what neighborhood it's in? So I don't know if there was like yeah. a couple of maps you had where you could speak to that. Yeah, we can go ahead and go to the the very beginning um, of the slide where it mentions Carter Park of Rosemont and Worth Heights area. Um, and anything in detail as far as neighborhood associations, anything that specifically what they wanted, what they were wanting us to mention. Hello. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, all I wanted to know was on the, uh, curbs on the, uh, let's see over there in Carter park, uh, on the. Oh, is it McClure? McClure Street? Uh, you, you're going to put drainage. Um, is there existing drainage there? Because, I mean, when I drove by there today, I noticed there was no curbs. And then along uh, McClure Street and the other streets that, that run, run into it, I noticed. Uh, so are they going to have to do a lot of digging? And how long is the digging going to happen? Because, you know, I don't know if this weather is going to change and it's going to be uh, really muddy over there. And if you start digging, that whole area is going to be uh, like underwater. So I don't know if this is going to occur after winter time or in springtime. Um, but that whole area, I, you can tell that, that that it's going to be all underwater. So it's going to cause problems. Is there going to be like anything that's going to be done about that or how is that going to be done? Yeah, so to answer the first part there, we are going to be building curbs on McClure Street. Uh, I know in some portions that there isn't curb and gutter, um, which is causing some flood issues and in, in some in people's private property. Uh, so we'll, we're going to accommodate that with new curb and gutters and direct that flow um, and let that stay in public right of way. Uh, and for the other question regarding construction, um, I won't go into much detail, but you, we have erosion control to prevent any sediment that goes into private property. Um, and we also, we, we do look into situations like that where in places where it's it's very prone to, to flooding that the contractor make um, precaution whenever they're doing construction around this area. So um, we, we would definitely, I, I know, this this area is is very prone to flooding and and uh, we will work with the contractor um, to make sure that you know the construction is not increasing the the flooding in private area um, and and we we'll, we'll discuss about that in the pre construction meeting um, in that pre construction meeting we'll have the contractor and and he can go into more detail about that. Yeah, my, my concern is, is a lot of the residents that live in that back area toward Butler uh, Street, uh, most of them are in construction and they use those, they, they have trucks and, uh, but they're also uh, some of the new development and some of the families there are, I saw, I noticed that their vehicles were like minivans and things like that. And the, you know, it, it it's going to get really uh, muddy out there and then 
I'd hate for those roads to be cut off because if you notice, like if you do cut it off, there's going to be no way around. We'll have to go from uh, Rippy Street uh, through behind where Echo Lake is at to come back around. And um, I just wondered if that, because some of them use from seminary, they go to that direction um, back that way from seminary instead of using uh, Rippy exit. They, they usually stop at the restaurant, at the seminary, and then they go home and they go down that 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 area, down McClure, instead of uh, taking Rippy and exiting there where there's no restaurants. And you know what I mean? So I was just worried about that. Yeah, that we don't area. have any plan of, of completely shutting down McClure. There is always going to be access. Um, okay. All right. That's fine. So as, as, as far as the flooding issue, um, yeah, we we will definitely keep that a note and make sure to work with the contractor to not uh, increase, you know, the drainage towards private property. Because I know that yeah, I, I saw that on Elva. On the Elva, what do you, what do y'all plan on doing on the Elva uh, Warren area? I saw like is a is a yeah. like a trench or I don't know what to call it. Uh, I don't want to call it a creek, but. It's a trench that goes parallel to Elva Warren on the east side of McClure. And I know that area, that whole street area is is just, it's awful. It's dangerous. It's actually dangerous. And if there was no um, guardrail on Elva Warren, um, somebody could slip off into that area and fall in that ditch. And it would be a uh, a problem. Uh, for anybody getting stuck over there, especially if it's pouring down rain, um, I'd hate for that be opened or stay opened actually, uh, where there's nothing to block a vehicle from sliding off in there. Are you specifically talking about the ends of uh, towards where Elva Warren and um, McClure meet? Okay, you know where they meet, right? Okay, and they yes. go east on that east. And that's where there's that trench that's parallel to the street. And if there's um, if there's a lot of flooding going on, a vehicle might slide off in there without a barrier there. I believe there is the an existing barrier um, to keep vehicles from going into further down to Sycamore Creek. Um, so if that's what you're talking about, there is on that dead end on the east end, uh, there there is. Oh, a no, I mean, I'm sorry, on the west area. end. I, I'm sorry, I, I meant on the west end. I'm sorry. Okay, the west end. I apologize. So on the west, on the, on the west end, we don't plan on going all the way to the dead end. Okay. Yeah, it's really bad. I, I saw all they had was uh, taped off, and I was like, well, that's not going to keep a vehicle from sliding yeah. off in that. Yeah, trench. as you can see on on this slide. We we don't go. Um, I would say we would probably okay. go. Okay, I I thought it was feet, I, west. Yeah, so, I thought the street name was covering the red bar, but I guess it stops where the street name starts. Yeah, so we're not going all the way to the 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 west dead end. We are going all the way to the east dead end, which that is okay. yes, for, okay, that's protected by um, traffic barriers, which won't yeah, allow vehicles that. to to go in and out. Okay, so the so where the red bar stops east, I mean on the west side of of uh, Elva Warren, that's where the construction stops. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Well, we'd like to uh, get some more construction on that area. We're, we're going to need construction on that area. It's it's really dangerous, and there's kids that live across on the on the uh, north side, and I wouldn't want them to be uh, out there when it's. Uh, Flooding out there. They play. They play right there. There's there's a little area where they. I've been seeing where they the kids play out over there in that area. Hey, David so, and Christian. Anyways. I do not mean to interrupt the project managers meeting, but if I may, my name is Laura Ingram, and I'm with communications with transportation and public works. I put my number or my email, but I'm happy to give you my number to David or anyone. We have a stormwater team that is part of transportation public works. And recently, Jennifer Dyke, who is our assistant director, presented on a panel 
discussing flooding in Fort Worth and residents can actually request for our stormwater team to come out and look at an area if you have concerns and offer input. So I know we have a member of our water department on, um, but I will put my number in the chat. I put my email and then help you get in touch with how to do that. Okay, well, all right. Uh, if you want my phone number, I can give it to you right now. I don't, I don't mind anybody getting my number <laughs> if you want it right now and okay. or my email well, address. Uh, it's, we are recording. Um, okay. So it will live forever on our website, or you can <laughs> call me. I'll just well, give you all my number here. 817-392-7812. Thanks. Sorry, Christian. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it, Laura. Does that answer your, your questions, David? Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, cool. I was I was just looking at that area and all that stuff, and and I used to live there when I was younger, and it's been like that uh, since I was, uh, well, I think I was like ten years old when I lived over there on Debbie Street in McClure, and it's always been like that. So I'm glad uh, the city is uh, doing something about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Go back to the end of the slide. If anybody has any additional questions or comments. Why? Uh, construction. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. That's okay. They can answer that question. I have a question after. Okay, what was your question, Dave? When does the construction start in a car park? Yeah, let me go to, so construction is anticipated to start October of 2024, so in about one year. Okay, okay. Specifically, okay. Carter Park, um, we we don't know those details of where the contractor is going to be starting work. Okay. Um, do, <clears throat> sorry, but uh, will y'all have information on the contractors, like someone y'all used before, that way I can check out their work? Yeah, like I, like I said, we'll have a pre-construction meeting about this project before construction actually starts and the contract that will be included in that meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Christina, did you have a question? Yes. Uh, okay. So it sounds like this is talking about future projects you said in 2024 to 2026. So, um, I guess it doesn't, I don't know if y'all can provide information of your, on your current projects. Right now, y'all are working on West Rippy and Rosemont. Are you able to speak on that street? Um, specifically, I can get you the, the project manager's um, contact information and if you have any. Okay, so you're not, y'all are not in charge of that, a specific project then. Um, and y'all can't probably mention when y'all will start on Lipscomb because I think Lipscomb is also listed to be like have the the water department um, replace the sewage on that street as well. Hey, Walter, uh, if you're not, I know you're on. Walter, is that a project that water department is working? Uh, I'm not aware of the project. Okay. Maybe okay. I'd, I'd have to uh, research it. We have quite a few. I know. Um, Christina, I would be happy to help you hunt that down. If you okay, are, yes, are you able to see the chat for my email or I can say my number again? Um, I'm not able to take it down right this okay. second. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll look up your name on the city website. It's, it's. Laura Ingram, correct? Yes. Uh huh. Just L A R A dot Ingram. At <laughs> Fort Worth, Texas .gov. So okay. we do project meetings. I mean, several throughout the week and transportation and public works has projects going on all over. Um, the meeting tonight is to share kind of the design plans to get input from you guys on Christian's specific project, although it spans 3 districts, 3 council districts. But yeah, if you need any other info, I will show you how to access that and um, stay up to date on what's well, happening. Specifically, the streets in Rosemont, because, um. I'm not that really great with maps. Which streets um, 
and um, I'm, I hate to admit I'm driving too. So I'm just speaking on the phone right now. I can't really look. <laughs> yes, can you don't tell look. me what, what? Can you tell me what streets are on this project that are that are in Rosemont specifically? So I believe Carter Park is obviously on eight, four, six, nine, and seven. Uh, Rosemont, I believe there's. I believe one it's along street. Seminary. Yes. What street is that? The one that's so, along Seminary. So this is Fifth Avenue. Um, we'll be doing the the scope of it is so it's Fifth from Flint to West Seminary. That's one portion, and then the other portion is Fifth Avenue from West Seminary to Broadus. Is that everything in red, or is there some missing that doesn't have red on it? So is as you can, if if you can see on numbers one and five, if you're able to look at the, see the presentation, that's the location of where Rosemont area is. Okay, I'm screenshotting it now so I can look at it later. But um, so, okay, that specific street. What did you say is going to be done on those streets? Again, can you please re repeat what the project is on those on that specific street? Yeah, I can go back to the slide. Um, so there's two different sections, uh, on Fifth Avenue. So we'll start with Flint to Seminary. So for Flint Seminary, we'll be upgrading the, ex the existing uh, six inch water line with the new eight inch water line. Uh, for the pavement improvements, we'll have obviously new pavement uh, with concrete curbs, a new driveway and new five foot sidewalks on both sides of the street. And let me, in the other portion, uh, fifth from Seminary to Broadus, this is that slide right here, will be upgrading the existing six inch water line to a new eight inch water line. This specific street is gonna be funded by water department. So this will be a new asphalt pavement. So no sidewalks on that one. So the sidewalks are already, they're, they're present and they're in fairly good condition. Um, and so there was, there's no plans of replacing any sidewalks, uh, driveways or existing curb. Okay, um, I'll have to maybe go double check on that street. Um, okay. Uh, um, but so at this point, it's been determined that the sidewalks are okay on that area then. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, is there any way, um, for is there going to be any room or when, when you put the sidewalk there and since construction, I guess there's going to be a new street put on there, a new pavement, everything. Uh, will there be a able to be able to put a bike lane on uh, McClure that way? Because I'm already thinking ahead, uh, maybe in the future that area is going to be area so we go straight to uh, Echo Lake. And I would like to have that um, from Echo Lake come down to Carter Park. Over there, Sycamore, uh, Sycamore uh, Creek. Mm -hmm. If you look on the, if you look at along, once you cross, uh, well, at the edge of uh, Seminary, where where Seminary where it gets close to that park, I would like that if McClure was able to link up Echo Lake uh, to um, McClure, uh, down McClure to Car Park, because that would be a, a pathway uh, the community community would be able to use later on in the future. Um, while it's being done now, it would save money actually to put something there now instead, or uh, 2024 when it starts to be done then. Uh, we're, we're looking at actually uh, doing a um, thing with the uh, Carter Park Elementary School to have a bicycle program. And so um, that would be nice to have put in next year and something that we could be able to use later on. And that would also when um, the development goes on at Echo Lake, uh, when they do Sikio Park and the baseball complex, oh, that would be nice to have around the community for the community to have that and, and connect that to Carter Park in District 8. So, yeah, with, with bike lanes, that would have to be more design and detail just because obviously the bike lane is gonna take more um, of the street and would have to figure out if, if um, there there will have to be all kinds of traffic studies, as well as if there is even enough 
um, right of way to include a bike lane in that street um, with the existing width of the of the the street right now. So would would that be a thing like a uh, a uh, uh, more fun because y'all didn't have enough funds or because uh, if that if that's with the problem, I could work on getting funds for that if you need me to. Uh, it was just never included. For adding bike lanes um, for this project specifically on bond projects, um, this is just to for paving improvements and utility improvements specifically. Hey, um, Christian, yeah, hey, uh, hey, so part of the part of the issue is, is how these streets are classified and the width of the right of way that the street is in. And there's uh, uh, these streets are classified as local streets, and there's just not enough room uh, in, in general to put a bike lane and, and have two travel lanes as well. Okay. Well, well, all right. Um, we'll find another way. Thank you. Hi, Christian. We also have yeah, the right. president of the Carter Park Neighborhood Association on. Thank you for joining us. Leanne. Um, the specific question, which I'm hoping maybe Greg or Mary, or maybe you Christian could answer is. Yes, hi, um, this is Leanna. I am hi. the president. Um, yes. I am the president of Carter Park uh, Neighborhood Association. And as I was driving home from work just now, um, I was noticing, you know, Evans Avenue is a really long road um, from 20 all the way into the Carter Park neighborhood. And I was trying to see what it is that we need to do uh, to get that road worked on. I know that you all already have plans for certain roads. And that's within y'all's budget, but what is it that we can do as a community to put in a request so that we can have the more um, accessible used roads worked on the ones that um, have high transit and volume because uh, all of Evans Avenue coming through from 20 is is horrible. Um, and we would like to, you know, see what we can do about that. Um, and also maybe putting in some some speed bumps in our neighborhood um, to deter the, the speeding. <laughs> Um, as far as that, Greg, do you have it? Could you elaborate on this one? I, I believe, you know, Christian, yeah. I'll take that. Um, hi, uh, my name is Mary Hannah. I'm the senior capital officer in TPW and I'm over basement management and uh, neighborhood trees. So, um, you, you have several questions. So, the first question about Evan, we are working, it, it did not. Is not included in the 2022 bond. So this project is 2022 bond uh, already uh, <laughs> gone. So we are starting working on the 2026 bond. Okay. Okay. So that's, it, that's it, understood. That's why I want to know what we can do moving forward. Yeah, moving forward. So we just starting working on the draft list for 2026. You can send an email to me to the council district. They will forward to us. So we'll rank all the streets, like we have more needs than what we can afford, right? So whatever list we get, we rank streets against each other. If that street is in worse conditions than others, we rank higher. There is other consideration, but this is one of the considerations of street condition. So uh, the first step, you can submit it through the app. You can send an email to the council member. I'll put my contact information here. You can send me an email. So we'll consider it and put it in the list. I, I cannot guarantee it's going to make it, but I, like it's it's all ranked against each other, and then we'll have public meetings and meeting with the council and everything, and then there is a final list at the end where you get the book to vote on. Uh, your other question about speed, I to put hum speed hum there. If the street is in bad condition, I don't think people will be speeding. I mean. Until we do you would the think street. that you would you 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 chuckle and you would think that they wouldn't, but yeah, unfortunately, my neighborhood my neighborhood is going through a dire situation, and what we're trying to do is improve it, um, improve the quality of living here. Um, so, and, I, and, and I, unless you come through this area, you wouldn't understand. No, I I completely understand. So there is so that is that's done through a different uh, group in TPW. 
actually you can submit a request. There is a new program where neighborhood can request uh, a study being done. And if the study proves that people are speeding, they go and install a speed cushion. Not a speed hump, it's like it's a different kind, it's a plastic thing. Uh, it allows um, emergency vehicles to go through without stopping. Because we stop putting that asphalt speed hump, what we call, because it makes the, uh, the vehicle uh, emergency response time less. So we, we're putting something specifically want to affect that. But they have to do a study. So that's, um, um, Laura, can you put the information for Shilti? Uh, group, they are the one who actually uh, take care of that response. Uh, yes, okay, I was thinking that was Raj, but who did you say? Kelsey. Okay. Um, and I'll put the information that you, know, you provided, you send, Mary, on the bond. Yeah, I, you know, if, even if you send your email to Laura, she will forward it to me and the other group. So whoever you send the email with the information, or the request, uh, it will come uh, to the right people at the end. So um, I'll definitely follow so, through with that. Yeah. So it will be if you if it's easier for you and instead of sending all these emails, you can send it only to Laura and she will forward it to us. She she okay. will take care of that and send it to to all of us and we'll take care of it and we can respond to you telling you we received it. If that will make okay. it easy. Because I'm, okay. I'm sure you I appreciate need to that. tell us, yeah, you, you need to tell us the exact location um, and the street limits where you want us to take a look at. Okay. And, and, is there is other, and there is projects going on currently along Evan and more in Rosemont, more than this project. So this is not yeah. the only project in the Rosemont area. We have other projects going on there. Um, I'm not this in the Rosemont. I'm in Carter Park. This oh, is... So, uh, well, Okay, Laura, go ahead. This is Christina from Rosemont. I just wanted to comment, uh, Liana, that um, we we submitted applications for traffic studies on busy streets in Rosemont. It took them a few months, but they finally did the traffic studies. They just lay a little cord across the street, and we haven't gotten a response uh, yet if, if it passed the traffic study. But if it passes the traffic study, then we'll get those speed humps and possibly um, a rubber like roundabout to prevent uh, uh, the donuts that they do in certain areas. So I just wanted to say from another community what our experience applying for the, the traffic study has been like. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll get with you um, after this meeting. That way we can uh, further discuss it so we can um, get those resources um, to our community. Hey, this is Laura, since Mary called my name. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes, this is a really great um, discussion and conversation. I have posted the My Fort Worth app in the chat, but also uh, if you have not subscribed to the city news, um, that is something you want to do because you get updates on things happening in all over the city. And the program that Mary mentioned is called Traffic Calming. So I put a link into the most recent article that discusses that program and the city is very aware of people speeding or driving haphazardly and we're working with the police department um, as well as our traffic calming team to help address that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll be looking for that uh, contact information. Hi, this is Vicki Vargas. I've had my hand up for a little while. Uh, I've got a question about um, the 2026 bond. It says here that it's in review. What does that mean? I believe um, Mary. That was from the... me. I was, that was my word choice. I apologize. Mary, I was trying to Recap what you shared on the 2026 yeah. bond, if you want to restate that process, because I I don't, I said in review in the chat to just try to offer folks uh, direction to the app. Okay. So, um, we just start looking at which streets can make the bond. So we are working on a draft list. So if you have any street we want, you want us to consider, send us the street uh, name and limit. And we will look at the condition. 
we'll see what else is going on there, and we'll put it in the list and rank it against other streets we have. So we have, for now, we have over 200, 300 streets in the list. So you can imagine that's a big list, but it doesn't mean, maybe the street you sent to us, maybe we already consider it. So send it to us because that makes it even um, better because we say, okay, uh, residents are recommending the streets also. It's not only coming from our data, it's coming from the residents. So it's most probably if the street is in bad condition, we're already considering it under um, the bond. And so are y'all gonna, gonna have public meetings uh, for, yes. uh, for, the, for bond? the bond? Yes, after we have the draft list and decide which street and how much is the bond, we start, we, we just in the early stages. Uh, when, by, so by 2025, we should start to the public meeting and uh, letting residents know what is on the list. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody have uh, questions, comments regarding this project or just? I, uh, I would like to, um, uh, reiterate what Vicky said about we do, uh, I would like to have public meetings. Um, I, uh, I think that all of us, uh, getting together in person might, might be, uh, helpful for the other community because it took me about 30, 45 minutes to with, with you to, to log on to this thing. And I'm just wondering for some people who don't have, uh, someone like you to, to help me walk me through it. Uh, it, it may be hard for some people. Uh, so in person, uh, is I'd like to explore that option for everybody to have that, you know, have that available for them at, in the future. I'd like to second that motion. I also had a hard time, uh, jumping on and I, I, I'd like to think of myself as pretty technologically savvy. Um, so. Definitely having more in person community meetings. Um, with an additional anticipated time uh, would be greatly appreciated to maximize uh, community input and involvement. I'd like to make a remark on that. Um, Ricardo, yes, you have a great idea um, along with David, but there's people such as myself who can't make it to these meetings. I was actually able to clock out of work um, so that I could sit in the lobby and, and take care of what I needed to take care of and then be able to clock back in when I'm done. So if we could have um, multiple ways of having these meetings, it would be appreciated on my end, someone who um, works evenings. So, um, uh, Laura, don't we have the construction meeting will be in person, the pre-construction before we start any construction in this area? since this was in birth and, and online? We will always do what works best for everyone. I think what our thought was on this one as it covered so many districts that we thought virtual would be good because how are we going to find the right place to please everyone? But yes, for sure, we will be happy if you want us to come out to your neighborhood association meeting or you know have Christian speak to specifics, we can definitely come to you and um, as far as an in-person meeting, yeah, we can make the next one in person um, if that works for everybody. Yeah. With, the, with the online component uh, for those who can't make it uh, in person, that'd be great. Yes, thank you, David. To that point, I want to be sure everybody knows um, after tonight, um, this recording, I'll It'll be a YouTube link and it'll be posted on our project page as well as Christian slides. And then mm -hmm. also any public meeting that the city holds is always on the YouTube city YouTube channel. So it'll also be there. And if uh, some folks have already asked that I send them the presentation, which I'm happy to do. And that video link as well um, will be available to you so you can. Share that with someone who wasn't able to join us tonight and then. Yeah, let us know um, how we can help you in your neighborhoods and. And be available to people to. Speak to these different projects happening. 
When is the next scheduled meeting? Um, that is, hasn't been established yet, but you will get. Uh, you will get a, uh, you kind of like this one with the virtual meeting, you'll get a Miller and um, sent to you about times um, specifically for the pre construction meeting. You mean through the newsletter? No, well, Actually, it's okay. because I didn't get a mail. Nope. Well, it will be sent. It will be sent um, physical mail, and it will also be updated on the project website of when that pre-construction meeting is going to be held. Um, so the next meeting is going to be the pre-construction meeting. Yes. Yeah. The next meeting we'll have is a public pre-construction meeting, um, just before construction actually starts to go into detail uh, about, you know, what the process is. So this this particular design. Phase meeting is to gather community input, or uh, what is like the ultimate purpose of this particular meeting? Yeah, yeah. The, the, you basically what you said, Ricardo, is, is to gather community input and to to take that in consideration before we go out into construction. And if there's any design issues um, that were needed to be addressed, um, so this specifically is to get community input be, before we complete the plans and get a contractor going and start the start construction. And was there any particular community input that you all will be taking back and to consider that was, uh, you know, inputted tonight? And if so, which part? Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like there was some issues with McClure. Um, some, well, there's some concerns about McLaren flooding, and, and we will definitely we'll get to that in the detail um, when the pre-construction meeting starts, because the contractor will be here to give us more intelligent information about to prevent the flooding in private property. Um, I think for the most part, the questions were weren't really regarding this project. I think it was more geared towards. Um, I guess different parts of the street in their area. So, um, in particular, there wasn't really much that was needed to be changed on this project. I think of the concerns, most of them were for streets that were outside of this project. I see Walter has his hand up. Yes, thank you, Laura. Um, I, I don't want to make this confusing. But I can't leave without uh, talking about the water department's role in this project and what we have planned for this area in the future. And uh, Christian mentioned that some of the streets are funded by water. Yeah. And and what that means is we're not reconstructing the street. We're replacing the water and or sewer lines, and then we're going to re replace the pavement as it was. And we don't intend to add sidewalks or or even replace the curbs if we don't have to. But um, the reason those streets were added to this project is because we see the need to replace those utilities. And as we were going through this project, we saw a need to go even farther. And we didn't want to uh, add too much to Christian's project, which is a bond program project. And our, our projects are funded through the water department, through our sources, sources of revenue. But we are planning to uh, do additional work on McClure and Butler and several of the other streets in this area in another project. And additionally, on the other, on the west side of the railroad, on both sides of uh, Evans Avenue, we plan to replace the water and sewer lines on the residential streets. But again, that will be a separate project from this one. And we've begun the design work. And in a few months, I'll be contacting you for another meeting similar to this one for for that project. Is, so is I just that, wanted to give you a heads up. Is I, I noticed that there were stakes up in over in Carter Park. Um, so are these improvements in anticipation of the new development that's coming in at, at Oak Grove and 20? No, 
No, that's far enough away that that won't impact you. Okay. And the, the stakes are probably related to Christian's project. Mine hasn't gotten that far yet. Thanks, sir. It looks like, excuse me, it looks like David has his hand up. I believe uh, David just commented on after Walter. Uh, Pass me? Yeah, you can go ahead. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Um, something came up. In my, I was thinking about it. Um, so is there, will there be any like sidewalks over there on McClure? Yes, we do plan on putting sidewalks along McClure. Um, okay, so then that that way there there's there not be won't be no room for a bicycle lane over there. Okay, um, so uh, with the bicycle, I mean with the the uh, sidewalks be on both sides, east and west side of uh, west of on on the along McClure. So the plan is we're going to be installing on the east end of McClure. Okay. Do, just because of the elevation difference on McClure, you have these these uh, compared to the pave the street all the way up to the uh, private property is such a high grade on the west end. Um, yes, I, I saw that, and some of the duplex, I guess those duplexes that were put in over there, uh, the runoff goes right into the house uh, or into the building. And I saw that, and that's probably going to cause a lot of um, uh, problems on the um, the. Uh, I guess it, the, it'll probably shift later on and cause problems on the um, the building, and cause cracks in the concrete on the brick. There was a brick. Uh, there's brick um, duplexes that are put over there on this along that McClure that I saw, and the runoff goes right into the house, so. Yeah. I, um, okay. Well, that's, that's I didn't know about that uh, sidewalk, so that helps a lot. Thank yeah, you. No problem. Christian, excuse me. Another um, question that came in is: Will we be adding ramps to the sidewalks? Um, specifically speaking, uh, there. Yeah, there will be ramps added to some of these intersections. There won't be. Ramps completely added on all four sides of the intersections, but there there will be. If you have any questions about a specific intersection, I'll be able to answer that that question for ADA ramps. I think it was Christina that raised her hand. Um, yes, it's me. Yes. Um, well, this <clears throat> meeting is for feedback of what we'd like to see. I'd like to ask why would a ramp not be added because we're trying to make a more walkable city. So, to me, any inter intersection has to have a ramp. So, why, what would it be a reason for not adding a ramp? So, for the, I can go to seminary from fifth to seminary. There's existing ramps on the south and north end of seminary that have ramps as of right now existing. And so, we wouldn't need, have the need to install ramps in that area. Uh, Christina, you, you Christina, sorry. Christina, I'm sorry. Any any sidewalk we are installing, we're going to put ramp at the end. This is just a, if what Christian is saying. If it's existing, we can connect with it, and and it's an ADA compliance. We don't have to replace it. But if there is not a ramp and we putting sidewalk, there is definitely going to be a, a ramp. That is not an option. Yeah. So, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there will be no sidewalk left without a ramp because we currently have plenty of sidewalks that have no ramps in my neighborhood. So every sidewalk, whether it's because it already has one there or if it doesn't have one, one will be added, correct? Yeah. At the end of the block, across the block, we have to put ramps. So what you have now in your neighborhood, whenever anyone uh, develop their house and install sidewalks, they are not continuing the sidewalk the, uh, on the whole block. So well, that's not the city project. The city project, if we are in a installing sidewalk, I'm not talking about the water scope because some of them is water scope, which is they are not putting even sidewalk. But if the project is part of the bond, 
and we are putting sidewalk, the sidewalk will include ramps at the intersection to cross. That is not an option. That will be ramp. Unless there is an existing ramp, like what he's saying, there is existing ramp to connect to, okay, you already have a ramp. But if there is not a ramp, you are getting ramp at the intersection. There will be a continuous sidewalk with AG ramp if we are in a going sidewalk. Thank you, because I'm, I'm currently, I mean, we do currently have lots of sidewalks. It's not that the resident didn't install sidewalk. We have lots of sidewalks that just run into the curb and there's absolutely no ramp there. So hopefully moving yeah. forward, there's r ramps that are yeah. going to be included on every sidewalk. Yeah, it's a, it's a law. We, it's an ADA law. So it's like we cannot do that anymore. It's um, uh, an ADA uh, thing, so we have to put ranks across the street. It's not an option. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about that yet. The project will include ranks if we put in sidewalks. Real quick, uh, speaking of drains, uh, at one of the uh, Brentmore meetings in the past, I only bring up Brentmore because McCorb, you know, runs into their uh, neighborhood. They've stated that there is a high uh, level of, of methane smell that comes up through in, into their homes when it rains. And I'm curious to know if, if that has to do with anything with the storm drainage. They've many have stated that you know. Um, is that a drainage or sewer? I don't know. That is so weird when it's raining and I smell inside the house. Right, right. And so apparently they've had conversations with the city. However, uh, I don't believe that there has been any solution to that particular issue. And I'm curious to know if these any of these two the problems or anybody in this particular conversation, as far as city staff is concerned, um, no uh, works or had any part in the cleanup of the railroad when it when it derailed when a uh, um, a few years ago was TPNW or uh, or the City of Fort Worth Water Department involved in that any part of that cleanup? Which three is it? McClure also. It's, if you're if you're talking about the railroad. It, the only portion we have is on West Buick. Are you talking about that portion? Right there by, uh, well, you, you don't have this map up right now, but where Echo Lake is at. Okay, let's go back to, okay. Um, okay, so you see on. Echo Lake, there's, you can see the railroad tracks going. Okay, so McClure, what name is it? But Claire is number eight, so right. okay. So right, right. so there's this other street that goes right here, right above number eight. That so it's, all this neighborhood area right there, those are the folks that are complaining about the high methane, high methane smell that comes into their homes after it rains. Let me try to address this if I can. It, actually, when you say methane, it has no odor. It's not methane that you're smelling, but it could possibly be from the sewer line because um, when when you have sewers that are in bad condition, when it rains, you can get odors from the sewer because they they'll collect the rainwater too. Well, some other some other uh, issues is that they say that they have uh, they get headaches and nauseous. Yeah, and that's, and that's yeah, what you're what you're smelling is coming possibly coming from the sewer line, and that's hydrogen sulfide gas, but not methane. Methane is a lethal gas. Very well, so for example, has anyone, I'm, I'm only bringing it up because these neighbors have brought it up in the past. Yeah. Do you all- Have they, have they called anybody at the city regarding this, especially when it's raining? I can only imagine so, because at the meeting that I was at, they stated that City of Fort Worth has come out there before, only again, they haven't found a solution to it. And I'm curious to know if when you guys are all working on this, you know, stormwater drainage and sewer lines, if there's going to be any, uh, I guess, 
reach out to the residents who have who have complained in the past. Okay. Um, we like I, I mentioned that we'll have a project coming up immediately after this one, and if, if it's going to include McClure that goes to the north to the railroad, and then Atkins and Riley Street, and a and a short section of Echo Lake Drive. Are those the streets you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay, those were going to be in the the other project that I mentioned that the water department's planning. And uh, we're executing a contract with a design firm now to uh, replace the sewer and water lines in, on those streets. Very well. Is there any, is anyone, is there any way that anyone from your department can reach out to the particular neighborhood associations uh, executive board to um, give them an update? Absolutely. Can you tell me the name of that neighborhood association? Is it Brent Moore? Brent Moore, B R E N T M O O R. Okay. And Laura, you may be aware of that neighborhood association. But we will we will reach out to them. And if you have any contact information for them, I'd appreciate getting that too. Very well. I'll see if I can put it in the chat. Thank you. We have another hand up. Yes, we can go. Um, I believe it's from David. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm barely learning how to put that hand up. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, real quick. Um, so I was I was looking at the uh, McClure. So as you do McClure, it has a lot of dips uh, in between the streets as they run into them. They connect with other streets uh, going south. Oh, I'm sorry, north. Uh, you, on both both directions, actually, and it goes to dips, and that's been a deterrent of high speed traffic. But I mean, they're still going about 30, 40 miles an hour down that street sometimes, even with the dips. So if y'all level it out, uh, we might need to get um, speed bumps to deter the high speed traffic. You know what I mean? Because if like we have dips right now, and and those trucks they run into that dip, and they end up like you know, they, it slows them down somewhat, but if that street is leveled out, I guarantee you it'll pick up to be 50 miles per hour down that street. So if that, if y'all level out the, those uh, that street McClure, then we'll we probably will need, well, most likely we will need uh, uh, speed bumps. So David, so um, I, I would like y'all to take that in consideration. Yeah. So after we, so we we have done that before. After we finish the project, you will have to, the neighborhood will have to submit a request similar to the request we, uh, Christina talked about that asking uh, the other section of CBW doing a traffic study, because of course they will be speeding uh, more after the construction, like you said, because the street will be smooth. So they will conduct a study and if the study proves that they are speeding and need to put a speed cushion, they will come and install it. But if we did a study now, we'll remove this during construction, and then you will have to do the whole process again. So it's better to wait yeah, until we finish I... the construction, and then they do a study based on that uh, traffic, um, new traffic pattern, because you, you may find more people using that street now after we finish the construction. And then we can yeah, do the I, study I... the speed. I understand that process in my mind. I'm thinking as a taxpayer trying to save money. And I'm thinking if we're going to be developing and we're going to be doing it. This time, I, I think on the go round, you go ahead and, and, and do this. Uh, before we spend more money, spend money on the research, all those things. And we just go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to no, save the city money. I, I, no, I, and, I, I completely understand, but they are like plastic things. They come and they put it bolted in the basement. So they are not like something like we bathe it with the street. It's not bathed with the street. They are like pieces. Um, if you go to the article that Laura uh, um, put the link to in the chat, you can see them. They have a picture of it. So it's like it's a plastic, big plastic thing. They bolt it in the basement. So it doesn't have anything to do with the construction. It can, it can be done after the construction easily. And yeah, we had the, we, we we had them put it on, on my street over there, uh, my property over there on Clover, off of Camp Bowie, yeah. 
we put those over there by the schools. Yeah. Um, yeah. I understand what we those are. Thank you. School. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Any comments? And if you can't see my contact informations up on the slide, so if anybody has thought about questions or comments after this presentation, um, you're more than welcome to call me or email me about this project. So. Christian, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. Okay. Well, I believe we're 740. So, like I said, if anybody has any questions or comments that they couldn't think of now and they thought uh, they're going to think of later, be, feel free to give me a call or email me and I'll be more than happy to, to help you out. Other than that, I think we, if nobody else has any questions, I believe we're good to go. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Christian. Great info and Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you.